Hi. How you doing? What's up? This is Todd, and uh, this is us launching our first video of Behavior Brew. Behavior Brew, what is that? Is it coffee? Is it a beer? No. Uh, behavior Brew means we're exploring the amalgamation, the ground-up madness that is the essence of human behavior in general. That's what we're talking about, Behavior Brew. And you may be saying to yourself, am I seeing studio stuff? Am I seeing uh, music related stuff? Well, you might be. Here's the thing. I am by trade. I am by all means a musician. But as a dad, as a curious human, as a father of two teenage boys, as someone who has witnessed the madness of humanity on Facebook, and social media since its origin many years ago. Um, between that and me explaining life and things to my boys as teachable moments come up, that's a parent thing, um, I've, I've wanted to be able to explain and understand things on a level that I can make plenty of sense and be speaking with accuracy and simplicity to teach, to genuinely teach and prepare my boys for, you know, here's how people work. Here's how the brain generally functions. Here's how we explain some of the behaviors we see uh, out in the world. You know, the world is, of course, uh, what makes the world go round it's the interaction of humanity is going to be greatly guided by our innate instincts, right? Who we are at our core. What is our, our caveman instincts? Our caveman, dumb monkey brain, lizard brain instincts have a way of taking control often. And I like to think that my current, my current summation of where we are is that a good version of ourself is we don't want to try to suppress and act like that monkey caveman brain doesn't exist. It's useful. It's got us to where we are, right? It's our most basic instincts that help guide guide us in important moments. But as as we here we are currently in 2024, I like to think of us having our like hopefully there's a higher more enlightened version of ourselves. I think of it as like a big glowy green hologram brain floating up here, trying to drive this meat sack and monkey brain to make maybe better choices if that option is available, okay? If we need to fight a dragon to save our kids, that's where the caveman brain gets very comes in very handy. When you get super angry, I, I've... Uh, seeing that wisdom says that the ancient wisdom says when you get super angry, you get super dumb, which probably you need so that you'll be willing to go out there in your thong, uh, your, your fur thong kini and fight that dragon, you know, and be back in time for lunch. And as a dad, I would totally be willing to do that. If, if my family was a danger, I would totally do that. And I would be grateful for dumb caveman me to get out there in his fur thong kini. Just I hope no one has to witness it. And I hope I bring reasonable weapons. But, you know, I'll go down for the cause for my family. Okay. Um, so we're going to explore. We're going to explore those themes here. This is Behavior Brew. My name is Todd. Did I say that? Uh, so what we're going to do. Maybe I thought to start, why don't we explore, because as a YouTube channel, I want to have some music available underneath. And I can use, I can use copyright free stuff that's out there. I may even do that. I may. But as a musician, um, I thought maybe I can, maybe I can uh, start off by creating some music that will work under various types of videos. Um, I do music for TV, music libraries, um, 
unscripted reality shows and talk shows and stuff like that. And so there tends to be, you know, a collection of feels, vibes, emotions that work well for a lot of different um, videos that work underneath. It's like it needs to work under dialogue sometimes. It needs to support the energy of a certain scene. Like used to be like, it needs to, ooh, here's a makeover show on Maury Povich. We need some, oosh, 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 right? Like a fashion show or um, we need to support uh, something I call minimal mystery, music that works underneath dialogue and is generally more calm, doesn't get in the way, but supports, you know, something that's a little darker. Um, it can be the same thing. I don't know if you call it minimal happy. I don't know what you call it. it. Works under dialogue, but supports a bit of a lighter emotion. So like Dateline NBC is a good example. You know, they'll have like, they'll be talking about like some, uh, my apologies to Dennis. I seem to always do this. You know, it'd be like, uh, the dentist in somewhere in Philadelphia that tried to kill his wife for insurance money. And so they'll be like, back in 1977, Dr. Roger Smith had a plan. He seemed like a happy, happy family man. And yet, it was learned later he was struggling under debt caused by a gambling addiction. And so underneath that, like, what would work under that to support... It's just a little dark, a little creepy, doesn't get in the way of dialogue, right? So there's music everywhere. You may not even realize it. Um, honestly, I didn't when I first got into it. Got into it. So this channel, um, Behavior Brew, is not about music, but it will have music. And if I have the time and energy to create custom music for the channel, wouldn't that be lovely? You know, I mean, it's not completely necessary because the music tends to be pretty low. Right. And it's not going to be like, oh, let's listen to that epic opus going on. Um, so it just depends because um, I imagine there'll be a lot of work. And so can I keep up with my day gig of making music for TV plus making custom music for just for this channel? I don't know. That would be nice. So I, I'd like to. Um, I'm not putting that burden on me because, uh, you know, I'll just have to see how it goes, right? But in the meantime, why don't we just kick off? Maybe we'll create a few pieces or one piece. I don't know. Um, so I had an idea. And full disclosure, I had started this video and I forgot that I had, I didn't have my camera selected. So I was speaking to a camera that was asleep, just as if it was on, it wasn't. And boy, did I feel dumb. So, I mean, I had the vid I had the I had a little musical idea in mind, and I started on it, and now here I am starting over, completely fresh, and uh, I, I deleted what I'd started, um, with when recording the screen, and then I thought, what? Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I think I said some good stuff, not about music, but I said some good, you know, some good smart sounding stuff, and now maybe what if I didn't? Maybe I lost it. I probably did, but here we go. This So this is Behavior Brew. I'm Todd. This channel is going to be, and I don't think I said exactly, but in case I didn't, it's basically about, some might call it a psychology channel. I think that's a little too, is it too broad or too specific? I don't know. Just generally things that have piqued my interest as a human being assaulted by uh, social media since its inception. And as I take more note of the craziness, you know, like of politicians and the, um, the interesting sort of uh, weaponization of different things politically, like how, it's like, I think this is politically neutral enough to say um, the, the whole like, should you get a shot or not for COVID it became almost like a weapon, right? It was really, really fascinating to watch that, how it became something not about so much science and medicine, but about uh, which side of the aisle are you on politically? I thought that was fascinating. And 
so as I found myself giving dad speeches to my boys and wanting to be able to explain things with clarity and more concisely, I want to understand myself and these things that are fascinating to me. So my hope is there'll be enough of humanity out there that is also curious about these things and want to explore it with me. So, you know, I'm not here to lay down the law and say, let me tell you about this because I'm so smart and I know stuff. I'm calling this an exploration of things. Now we'll research and dive into a little deeper. And I think honestly, it's helpful to, I think it's helpful to have a better understanding as a person, what is driving you? What is driving other people? Are there things you can manage more effectively? Right, so that your your choices are a little more informed and on purpose, rather than a knee jerk reaction based on monkey brain, right? Monkey lizard brain. Um, so that's what this channel is going to be about. And just kicking off video number one here, I thought, well, maybe maybe we can create some music that will work for the channel since me being a musician composer and all that. So I'm using, I'm using software. It's called a digital audio workstation. That's the sort of the generic name D a W we call it a DAW. And these days, you know, all the sounds are on board the computer unless you're using external sound modules and synths. But, um, these days really you can just have, computer you know you don't need to have external boxes now as you can see i have some gray we don't have to talk about age you can't help when you're born am i right we can't help um but i've been around i've been around uh when midi first sort of got its foothold i was a teen and we bought some gear and i learned from the beginning how do you create a track as a single meat sack in space time. How do you create a music track? It was like one piece at a time, like, like bass and piano and drums one at a time through the magic of technology. And so we've come a long way since then. And, and, and the sounds and the depth of sounds are spectacular. I look forward to where that's going to go. Other than the potential that AI will take over all the jobs and make us sad. Uh, you know, we've seen it's already th threatening, it's threatening, uh, you know, creative arts on levels, which is weird, right? You wouldn't think that'd be the first to be under threat. You'd think it'd be like AI is taking over accounting. All the accountants are on the streets and angry because they don't have jobs anymore, you know, um, something like that. But instead, it's like it's messing with art because even though it's an amalgamation based on training on billions of images what it comes up with is pretty cool right imagery now it can even create logos my wife is a graphic designer um she hasn't worked in a long time just she's dealing with, with stuff health stuff and i've been glad and happy and proud to be able to support the family without her feeling pressure to um, work. Uh, the graphic designers used to make, she's, you know, she's, she's gotten big chunks before creating a custom logo for like uh, back in the day, it was like for a record label and like a record producer. Um, you know, already those jobs have been threatened by, um, you know, whatever it was, Fiverr, or websites that create an amalgamation for you quickly. And now um, AI, um, ChatGTP 4.0, can create a logo and, and uses Dolly, D-A-L-L-E, Dolly, I guess they call it. Um, hello, Dolly. So even though, uh, yeah, what am I saying? Erase the last five seconds. Um, it's really cool what I can do, even though, oddly enough, Dolly uh, 
in, in its training, it hasn't learned how to spell very well. So I will like 10 times in a row say like, uh, create a logo, create a logo using these words and it'll misspell one or both of the words, or sometimes it'll finally correct one word and misspell the other word, you know, um, and I'll, I'll say chat GDP. I'll say it keeps misspelling or I might get frustrated and go really. And it goes, I think you're frustrated. Let's try again. And then it'll finally say, Hey, you're just going to have to hire, uh, use an alternative method or hire a graphic designer to finish it. And I'm thinking, can you just spell it right? Can you? That'd be great. Um, but other than that little side trip down a bit of frustration, it's amazing what it can do. It can create all manner of art and, and logos included. Now used to not be able to do anything with the words, right? It would, it would make up weird words. I don't know if that was, I don't know what that was about. Um, and so we're at the beginnings of AI generated music. I don't know if you've seen that or messed with it. Um, it's not incredibly threatening just yet. Um, I have a massive catalog of all kinds of music uh, that's with my publisher. It gets used under TV shows, you know, reality shows, all that. Um, and it's a wide, really wide variety, um, covering all kinds of moods and genres. And so it's, uh, the ability of AI to just create a good sounding piece of music for me so far, what I've seen, um, is a little hit and miss, mostly miss, um, I think it's really just a matter of time, to be honest. Um, if you want to mark my words, as they say, mark my words here in, here in January, 2024, mark my words, uh, my, my, um, my guess is that my prediction is that if, if AI can create imagery like it can, and it can create, um, well, it's at the beginnings of showing the music that it can, can create, right? Um, if it can create various, various digital uh, versions of a real person, if it can recreate your voice, um, I've done that. It's fascinating and weird. Um, it can do all these things already really well at whatever level it's at. So my prediction would be it's simply a matter of time before I think you'll be able to tell um, AI, okay, create an action movie for me. Create an action movie and you might give it some parameters or maybe no parameters. And it can basically spit out a fully rendered action movie that looks like, you know, maximum resolution, reality, real. It looks like real people. It looks like real backgrounds, you know, the special effects, all the things. And it'll have probably really amazing music. Uh, all the voices, anything you would possibly see or hear in a movie. I feel like you'll be able to create that by a prompt. What is that going to mean? You know? So I see no reason why that won't be the capability of AI in whatever number of years it takes, right? Five years, 10 years. I mean, I don't know if you realize it was just like less than a year and a half ago that I think the original chat GTP came out. And from there, it's, we're at chat GTP four and literally it feels like you're talking to an absolute real person and you can say, Hey, can you give me this or that? And whatever you ask for, for it to write, it seems like it can, um, you just playing with it. It's remarkable. And sometimes I'm, I feel like if I mean, if I mean to chat GTP, 
is it actually self-aware and it's going to come after me like in the movies? I don't know. I'm not worried about that. I'm boy, my blabbing. Am I 20 minutes? Remarkable. It's like a dad speech. Right about now, my boys would, their eyes would be glazing out like, dads, please stop. Um, and so what are we doing here right now? And how did I get it talking about AI? I don't know. I don't know. So let's, let's do the thing. What I wanted to do was, uh, it's like, okay, maybe the first thing, I, the first step, maybe I can create some simple underscore that will work for the, uh, sort of psychology videos. And, uh, that sets a bit of a, I really, I don't like how, um, generally it sounds almost too specific. But I think that's what they call this kind of category. But it's uh, behavior brew is going to be about human behavior and how it affects things that we do, the way we perceive things, the way it affects what we would like to happen, right? So uh, who knows? We're, we're exploring. We're exploring and things that I think will be helpful. Let's I'll always be thinking like, what can I, you know, would this be helpful to my boys to learn? Would it be helpful for maybe someone else? If I've come across something or if I think this is generally not an explored subject in the general consciousness, maybe I'll put it out there and see what people think. So that's kind of what we're doing here. Behavior brew. Anyway, my name's Todd, and we're going to maybe explore some ideas for music that will work underneath this channel. Cool? So I thought maybe starting off, we'd do a simple piano part. Now, I did, I had this in mind before I started recording the first video, but um, hey, I'll admit, I messed up. I wasn't recording my face. But I intended to, so this is 2.0. But I want to start over. Um, I already decided a tempo by this tap pad. You click it, ch 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 and it'll decide the average tempo that you're trying to pick out, and then you can adjust it. So we're at 107 beats per minute based on what I had clicked. And we're going to start with this simple piano idea, which I'm thinking is relatively emotionally neutral i know we don't all throw that phrase around let me tell you something emotionally neutral um this is going to be uh something to have a little movement mellow energy underneath a video that's not necessarily dark or light that's my feeling on this one is that cool all right and you'll hear clicks the clicks will be uh, it'll give me the tempo so I can play along and stay on a grid. And so here we go. Four bars of clicks and then I'm going to go. So it's roughly a minute. Maybe we can kind of loop that, right? So what I would typically do, if it makes sense for the part, is quantize it. That means make it playback only, uh, accurately, rhythmically, only on certain notes, only on certain parts 
uh, divisions of the rhythm. In this case, if this is a quarter note, that means each bar, one, two, three, four, right? That's a bar. So a whole note would be the whole length of it, right? I'm speaking to you as if a non-musician because this isn't a music channel, but in case you're remotely interested, that's what I'm doing here. So half note would be half of that, like one, two, like, uh, right? Because it's half the bar, basically, is what it is. A quarter note is one, two, three, four, one, right? So an eighth note is dun, 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 and so my piano bar is dun, 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 dun. so every note it hits needs to be uh, on an eighth note somewhere even if it's not playing eighth notes continually if I want it to land on the eighth division of a bar I will say quantize to the nearest eighth note with the attack of the note when it starts I can release the end of the note so it lets go at an exact but that's not necessary in this case so I'll apply it, and so that is what quantizing means, in case you've not heard that or aren't familiar with it. Uh, so we're viewing down here an expanded, an expanded uh, version. We can shrink it, blow it up a little bit. That'll show the actual notes. That's the exact length that I held the notes. Uh, this pink area is the sustain. I have a pedal down here. Um, sustain pedal. I'm just shy. Look, I'm talking about basics just, just in case. Hey, right? It'll be however long I hold it. If I hit sustain, it'll sustain, right? Right? So we're using two hands and a foot and a brain. I didn't know I could operate all those meat items at the same time, but it's a miracle, isn't it? It's a miracle. Um, I pulled up previously some simple wood loops I made from a cajon. It's C-A-J-O-N. I don't think there's an E on it. C-A-J-O-N, pronounced cajon. You may have heard the phrase about someone having cajones, cajones. I don't know why. I don't remember what that means exactly in Espanol. But it's like a wood box. And it's got a an opening in it so that the resonant bass frequencies can come out and it's got a bit of a it's got a snare meaning some wires attached to it that give a touch of rattle and bite like a snare drum has the same thing underneath um and i made some loops so we could pick if we're saying we're creating an arrangement we have the basic piano part right So when you create an arrangement, one thing you consider is what what would make sense? <clears throat> what is there space for? Um, if you're uh, uh, thinking an obvious choice would be something rhythmic, some kind of drums, a drum drum kit, like boom, 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 or something lighter, just the percussion part. In which, which case, I'm thinking I'll start with that the cajon loops. And we can do more than one. So let's say we start with that one. Now, since we don't need to, you don't need to sit here and watch me hold that for a whole minute. I'll grab this. It's one more loop. I'll grab it and take it to bar. 30, right? 30. And it will play back the whole way. It is a loop. Now, what if we, here, let's copy that. To the next note up. Whoops. Quantize that too. Um. We're looking for something lighter, something that will add to the energy, maybe in the higher frequency zone, 
something lighter. Um, we don't need as much beef. We don't need to conflict with that one. Now, is that going crazy? Is it too much? It's a lot of stuff going on. Let's just try it. So it's going to be two loops. That's not bad. Let's just explore for a second. That's A1. So that's up in the higher range. There's not that beefy, almost kick drum sound. Let's add that in, see what has. Oh, well, let's try that instead of the last loop. Let's try these two loops now. Okay, I had pulled up a bass, like a bass guitar. It looks like a guitar, but it's the four strings, the bass. Uh, like if you see a rock band, you, I'm sure everyone knows, but just say, hey, rock band is often a drum kit. One or two guitars with the six strings. Then the bass guitar does the bottom end, the low stuff. It's usually got, usually got four strings. They can have a boatload of strings too. But we pulled up a bass sound. So there is room for a bass. We want to add a little beef, support the bottom and the lower frequencies. There's room for a bass. It's not a conflict with anything. It doesn't, uh, usually don't want to have a lot of motion with a bass sound because it's going to be messy. Um, generally a bass player's part is super important, super vital, but not necessarily a lot of going on. In a, in a typical song. It just needs to be solid, reliable, hold that bottom end down, right? With the kick drum, like, it just needs to be like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I'm about to start doing dumb stuff. So, uh, we'll just play a simple part, but down here in this low range, which is below the piano, and we'll support the bottom end, and hopefully add something without taking away or being too much. That didn't even speak, did it? Let's try that again. gonna pull up this piano part on this expanded MIDI view so that I can kind of follow along and hopefully play the right notes. It's a simple part, but you be you know what? Music that goes underneath dialogue, etc., is usually gonna be overall not horribly complicated because it's not gonna make sense, you know, um, to be all kinds of craziness like look what I can do while well, someone's trying to talk. Uh, so I'm just trying to play something basic, which is good because uh, it's not like I'm a virtuoso. You know, some John, here comes John Petitucci. Um, let's try this again.
that freaked me out. What did I do here? We need, we're trying to fix that note. going to quantize that also to eighth notes right whoopsies all right one thing we can add which i previously did first time i recorded it um, there's something called an ARP. Short, we call it ARP. It means an arpeggiator or arpeggiated. It means a note that is going, we, it's a type of patch. It will, you hold a note down, it'll automatically repeat the note on either a specific pattern or maybe just eighth notes or 16th notes. And then it's usually going to be either pre-programmed pre to, um, play that pattern with any note you hit and, and keep that if it's two or three notes it'll play the same pattern all together or sometimes it'll divide the rhythm between the notes like so I, I picked a simple pattern that can add a little like it's like a little motion a little salt and pepper on top it's like a texture it's, it's spread out, it's up in that high end. It's just to add a little something up there. What happens if we make it a chord? So in here, it's, it's dividing between the notes. It's playing the pattern going between different notes. And otherwise, sometimes it might, you might pick a patch that is set to play all the notes in that dun 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 Maybe we'll do that. Okay, so we're adding the ARP. So that's the arm. You see how it's off? It's a little late. Um, as a, um, I'm a white man born and bred in the South. I'm glad to say I'm not rushing. Uh, something about the white thing makes you want to rush ahead. It's almost like our caveman brain. I don't know what it is. It's, I witnessed it. I witnessed it as a experienced musician. Why people want to be Russian. They want to be Russian things. So I'm glad I'm well, on the other side. I'm delaying just a bit. <laughs> That's a little, little why, hey, white people can make fun of white people, right? So let's also quantize that to the eighth notes. All right, now you're thinking, 
Is it done, Todd? You might be thinking, hey, hey, Todd, is it is it done? Again, this is Behavior Brew, and I'm Todd. And I'm, I've ended up somehow making a music-based video for a channel that is not about music, but I'm maybe making some music that'll work underneath some of the videos. Maybe we'll call this BB1, Behavior Brew 1. And you can tell me if you hear it come up, hey, I recognize that piece of music from the first video that you made. Um, so what would work? Something you might call something that could work in this situation. Way up high, way up high above what's going on. You could have a simple high pad sound, which is like a soft synth, just sustained sound. It's uh, kind of soft around the edges, not obnoxious. Just kind of like it's just, it's present. It fills out a chord or the high note or a low, a low note. Um, Why, well, I was thinking I'll use strings. Why don't we, here, check this out. Nexus, see all this action? That's a good synth plugin. What if we were to duplicate that? Nexus copy. We'll make it a different color. We could say, this is gonna be the pad, so I don't confuse myself. And then we can go, okay, we need a pad sound, a pad. Does it have pad? Look, pads. Um. That's pretty mellow. Well, let's just try. Um, here, let's add pad, oops, pad. We need to pick which instrument we're using, which is Nexus pad. This right here is how we open the channel to receive the MIDI signal. What did I do? Oh, I need to, here, double click it so it'll load. That's a preview, you just land on it. It's like a preview sound. Here, you double click it, okay. Let's turn it up a bit. Um. So we'll, we'll just maybe just try one. One or two notes way up high. It's almost like a glue. It's like, it's, it's, it's expanding all the way across. Like it's, it's like a, like a little tiny rope or thread or some glue, just kind of holding it all together, you might say. But there's room for it. In the arrangement, there's room for it, right? Does that make sense? And that it's not gonna be in the way. It can add to it, add something, adding a little interest for your ear, but it's not in the way. Maybe something up there. That's a bit too loud, isn't it? Isn't it a bit too loud, right? Also, maybe a, maybe a sound with a little more activity in it would wouldn't wouldn't suck like you hear that movement within the sound it's it's uh, morphing opening up high frequencies coming in and out the volume changing a bit it's like it's got a little life in it we might try that we can always change the sound that's the magic of mini. You can change the sound later. Here, let's add that real quick.
Food must be ready, buddy. Okay. So, you see this right here? It looks like it stopped. And then you can see what's holding down the sustain. I did that so I could come down here and change the volume a little bit. Mix it in a bit. So, another thing, when you're creating an arrangement, um, there's the parts, right? Like piano, bass, percussion, the arp, the pad way up high. And then there's how does how do those parts fit into the space? Also, uh, there's left and right mix. Most music you hear is a stereo mix. There's with Dolby Atmos. Atmos now. I have a friend of mine that mixes in Dolby Atmos. He mixes TV shows. Um, he can go up to like. It's like 9.1.4 or something. Um, it's like nine speakers. Point 0.1 is the sub. Point 0.4 is the two or uh, four speakers in the ceiling. And uh, Dolby, Atmos, At Dolby Atmos is really, really cool in that it can, um, it uses probably an AI, you know, kind of, uh, kind of, um, software. It's really smart. Uh, so my, my friend, he can mix all his elements, not just the stereo music. The music is probably stereo. He doesn't create or mix the music. He gets delivered music, dialogue, effects, all the stuff mixes it where it needs to be for a TV show at accurate levels up to specific specs required by networks, cable shows, whatever, cable networks, uh, streaming services. Uh, he can place things because you have a choice of where to put it in all these speakers. You can almost place something anywhere you want around you. You can have it up here or closer to here or right here, depending on how you blend it between the speakers right? So that it can effectively mimic, is there a sound source right there? Or is it kind of up to the right? Or is it right above you? And it's weird to think now, how do you emulate? How do you emulate something like that? Um, unless you have all those speakers, there's even like, uh, they, they somehow can recreate that kind of thing in headphones. And Keep in mind, it's all how your two ears, left and right, perceive audio, right? And it's dependent on, it has a lot to do with when it hits your ears, how is, what is, how is the audio colored? Like, if it's coming from there, from this side, it's going to be more high end. High end is really direct, like high frequencies. It's really direct. So something's over here. You've learned that that means the sound is more direct on one side, right? If it's not directly to the right, you've learned that if it's a little more, like if it's on your left ear, you've learned that, you've learned that the direct sound, the direct frequencies, most of the sound is coming in this ear. That means it's coming from the left side. And you've learned that you can still hear it in this ear, but it's, the frequencies are going to be way dulled and less volume, right? And so when it's up above you, you hear something up above you, like I'm snapping up above my head. I know you don't hear this the same way. Your two ears, left and right, perceive that based on what do they, how do they interpret the two sounds together? How the frequencies strike your ear. It's based on timing, like it can be fractions, milliseconds. The difference between you do this, your ear knows, well, this one was a few milliseconds, you know, sooner than this one. And so it's like, okay, it's more toward this ear. And you just learn to associate what are those different colorizations mean to your, to, in, in the space. And it's really interesting. Um, at least, at least it was to me nerding out as a uh, tech guy, but uh, I'm telling you, my friend Jim, 
sitting in his studio, listening to stuff. Has had uh, we listen to hear what he says. Here's how he, here's how he says: If you're mixing, you want a reference to money, reference to expensive stuff, reference to stuff that had a big budget. You know, reference to that 150 million dollar movie. So he put on. I think it was like a sci-fi movie. I can't remember now. It has had to have been the most perfect, pleasurable listening experience I've ever had. Just sitting there in the perfect, you know, where he sits, where he mixes. It's designed so that what you hear in that one spot is the best possible scenario for hearing clean, accurate versions of what was intended with you know my friend jim is he's very talented uh he's in demand because he's so good at what he does and he's always been like five years ahead of everybody else you know telling me about telling me about stuff i've never heard of you know um it's crazy um so that was that was that was completely uh, just a delight to as a nerd music nerd art audio nerd just to listen to that oh my gosh it was amazing. I wish, honestly, I wish you could hear it. It was like perfect. Like, you don't have to be a music nerd, but you know, the fact is we all appreciate high quality production. You appreciate it when you go to the theater and see this high resolution, $150 million movie with the best possible of everything, hopefully, produced for your enjoyment. And it's made as high quality as possible because you know people respond to it and appreciate it right and again i don't remember why i was nerding out on that but it was so this is what we have so far i started with a piano add a little motion with the percussion add a little low end with a bass right uh the, the arpeggiated synth sound up a, sort of above the piano, add a little constant motion, and then the high glue way up top with the pad. So let's see what we have. See, now I remember what I was doing. Okay, where's that piano? We were talking about, there's the parts. There's where they fit all together, their motion, their role as harmony or a melody or a movement, some sort of energy, and what frequency they're in, what frequency range they're in, can they fit together without just getting lost in each other, being redundant without, without adding anything specifically. You're gonna have two sounds in the same range. If they, if they work together, add some interest, create their own unique texture by combining the two, that's awesome. Um, but generally it's like what works, what fits in the space and in the space mix wise, that includes, you've heard a reverb, right? When I, when you, someone is singing in a song, often there's some level of reverb, like you're singing in a cave, right? You know what I mean? Um, right now everything's super dry, especially the piano. The piano is super dry, Right? So what all is here? Okay, yeah. So... Nobody else is using this, right? I wanted to make sure I didn't put bass with this. So what I can do, well, let's know that's where it's coming from. Go over here, pick a reverb. Now there's this giant reverb. I, uh, it's called black hole. It can be super, you know, it could be like a 30 second long reverb, but I just think it's got a nice overall sound to it. If you don't overdo it. So, so check, see how it can be like ridiculously long and dumb and not useful in this kind of setting. Like piano in the Grand Canyon, I don't know. So 
this is how much mix is how much reverb size is how long is the reverb how huge how open overall so what if we take it way down not too heavy in the mix and not too long not bad right so check this out the difference between that completely dry bone dry piano and adding a little soft edge around it it's like it sets it in a space and it's something something about reverb can just often be a pleasant for the ears it's just like a little cushion uh it the texture of reverb added to a sound is often just somehow pleasurable i don't know what it is so let's hear this with some piano uh with some reverb on the piano Right now, we may want to. Was it that one? Yeah, we may want to back off a bit on the mix and the size, maybe, maybe. Hey, buddy. child number one sort of barking as he went by just saying hi okay sorry that may have been complete chaos um one of my boys telling me uh, my mother-in-law is here making food i'm telling you that's awesome um it's like food just shows up um and that's quite lovely um she's amazing she does she comes to visit she's like she starts missing the boys wants to come out every few months maybe for a little while um she's great um she keeps the laundry going she cleans and sweeps uh, dishes um uh, all the stuff look my, my wife's been dealing with uh, long-term chronic stuff and she's not available a lot and um you know it's just it's what it is we we are trying to deal with it as best we can we throw money at it but in the meantime i mean it makes it extra nice and special when grammy comes out it's brenda's mom and uh she just keeps it all going you know the food Dishes, laundry, cleaning, and um, this woman's eighty-two, but she—I don't know. I don't. It's like I'm just trying to keep up with work, you know. Keep up with ordering groceries. Keep up with. The, I'm putting out fires almost. Just trying to keep up with life for the family and working, like ordering groceries, paying bills, you know. I don't really keep up with other stuff very well. It's like when, when we ha absolutely have to get some laundry done, then I'm like, okay, I better deal with that, right? But Grammy just, she just keeps on top of it. And she, she just describes like she has to be doing something. She can't just sit there. And I'm like, I don't, that's odd because I feel like I, I can just sit there too easily, you know. So anyway, that's what's going on. That may have been total chaos because my son was asking, and I just paused it, and I don't know. That probably looked terrible. My apologies. Um, can you believe I've been blabbing for like an hour? So that, you know what? I would say, I would dare say, with the elements we have, all the parts, piano and bass, percussion, the arp, and the pad, and then once I added that um, reverb, it's really well, well on its way. Uh, typically, you would track all these parts. Typically, you would track all these parts. So you would have 
piano on its own audio tracks. So you render it to audio. You've probably seen like a waveform, right? A representation of waveform. You, you track all these to audio. And then you can have way more individual control on how you manipulate. If you need to change the frequency content of a particular sound so that it's not like if the bass might have too much bass, right? Or or the piano, if it's a part you're down the low end, it's got it's got a lot of beef in it that's the bass is playing is keeping that range filled up. If you overlap that with low end something else, that it can be like a low mid range build up of frequencies that's it's too much. It's 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 uh it's a build up of frequencies that don't need to be there and this starts masking other frequencies other stuff that you want to hear it makes it hard to hear other things so you want to the idea of a mix is not just the levels how does each instrument sound in relation to the whole piece in relation to each other then you break it down more granularly it's like first you have the forty thousand foot view right and then you kind of zoom in okay the piano, we need some reverb to give it a little space, right? Um, or the piano's, okay, let's compare, Where does how does the piano sound um, compared to everything else? Do we need that bass in on the piano if it's playing the part with lo using the lower end of the range? Is the bass, and this is not gonna tell you the bass, uh, it's got a little bite, an edge to it that maybe I don't want. And I would just roll off, essentially roll off some of the higher frequencies because that bite kind of thing doesn't exist way down low, really. You can get it all down where it's just, you can get it down where it's just like, mm -mm, like just the, just the low part. Uh, the per perk, like we might want to add a little reverb, same thing we do with the piano, to give it a soften the edges, set it back. It's almost like you're setting it back in the stage, right? Um, who knows? Or I may go, let's try a different ARP, or let's try an additional ARP sound or let's try a different pad whatever but let's just check it out real quick what do we have what have we Right. Okay. Should we do a quick test? Should we, let's do a quick test. Um, let's uh, as when I'm uh, I do a quick edit on the video. Uh, we'll pull down the music, and we'll uh, we'll do a quick loosey goosey dialogue. Let's say that this is a future behavior brew video and using this music on our subject. Let's say, what's our subject? Um, all right. Welcome to Behavior Brew. This is Todd. Today we're gonna explore, why can people be so terrible on social media? Why can people be the worst of humanity on social media? Well, I have some theories and let's explore it, shall we? And here's the first theory. Did it work? Did I add something underneath to add a little motion? Like I, I don't want, I don't want the channel to be like just because I'm talking about like I really hate how people could be terrible on social media. We're trying to be lighthearted, and we're just exploring and universal themes that I think we've all experienced. If you've been around long enough, like say in that instance, you've been on social media long enough, you know. You've been on Earth. You made enough laps around the sun on this planet, you'll know, you will have witnessed certain behaviors consistently, and it can be super frustrating um, and super intriguing, but super consistent, right? I don't know, did it work? What do you think? Um, hey, let me know. And so maybe we'll do another few videos before we 
kick off our real subject matter that we're going to be dealing with the various, you know, things like why I'm sure I'll do that one. Why are people, why can people be terrible on social media? Right. That kind of thing. Um, so Hey, if you watched it or if you made it this far, amazing. Thanks for checking it out. Um, so this is the, it's going to be, I presume this kind of music related video wouldn't be something I would typically do on a regular basis on behavior brew, but if it's appropriate, sure. Why not? Maybe we'll explore how does music affect your emotions while watching movies or TV or whatever. You got to figure out the best way and the best questions on how to explore these topics. But anyway, hey, thanks for checking out behavior brew and I'm Todd and we'll see you in the next one.